Does this jacket make me look bookish? I'm just cold. Hello and welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, I make videos about living with a 40 item wardrobe as well as some home decluttering. I also recently made an Instagram, which I will link down below. Now, if you already follow me on Instagram, you may have seen that this past week I had a little side project to declutter and organize my bookshelves. I posted a before and after picture and I will insert that here. Now, to be fair, what uh, really contributed to the difference in before and after, I think, was removing a lot of board games with really loud packaging, as well as some other items that just didn't belong, but I did get rid of some books as well, so today I thought I would share my top tips for decluttering books. My first technique, and one of the most effective in my opinion, is to define a place for your books to live and how much space you want your books to take up. Maybe your goal is to dramatically downsize. You want to fully convert to an e-reader and have no physical books. Or maybe you're really lucky and you have a library space or an office and you want that to contain your books. Most of us probably fall somewhere in the middle. You might have a bookshelf that you want to hold a curated collection of your favorite books. No matter what your circumstances are, define a place for your books to live, decide how much space you actually want them to take up, and let that be your rubric for determining how many books you can keep. To use myself as an example, I have these two built-in bookshelves in my living room that you saw in the before and after pictures. Now, this was already sort of the natural place for my books to live. My books were already there, but everything was really cramped and congested, and I wanted everything to have a bit more breathing room. I wanted the items on the shelves to contain or take up less space. And so I'm a really visual person. I did an image search and looked on Pinterest for examples of how much space I wanted my books to take up on the shelves. Now, I feel like I need to give you a little bit of a disclaimer, and it's that I am not the most avid reader. My books don't really, I don't really have an emotional attachment to my books, but because I have these built-in bookcases, my personal preference is for bookshelves to hold books rather than knickknacks. And so because I have these built-in shelves, I've kept more books over the years than I might otherwise if I didn't have these bookcases. To me, I think of the books or most of the books that I have as basically functional decoration. And so again, I kept more than I might otherwise if I didn't have these bookcases, but my goals were largely aesthetic to give everything more breathing room. And so I decided that I wanted my books to take up roughly 50% of the space. I wanted 20% of the space for sort of other objects, things to punctuate the shelves, and then about 30% of the space just to be empty, to give everything breathing room. I ran out of breath just there, but I was going to say that even if your goals aren't aesthetic in nature, then you can still use this to define how much space you want your books to take up. That's going to give you hard parameters for how many books you can actually keep. My second tip is to be really honest with yourself about how much you read and whether or not you reread books. Now, if you're really a book person and you have sort of like seasonal favorites that you like to read during particular seasons, then go ahead and keep your favorites. But if you're holding on to books that you haven't read more than once because of the idea that one day you might want to reread it, then I think it's really important to understand that books are not a scarce resource. If you ever want to read that book again, you can really easily acquire it in a shop or from a library. My next tip is to curate what I call personality badge books. So books can externalize parts of our personality that we like to display to other people or even just to ourselves. And I don't think that's inherently a bad thing, but we don't need physical copies of every book we've ever read in order to do that. So instead, what I recommend is curating a selection of your favorite books and letting go of genre duplicates. You can still show off your favorite books and genres without overloading your bookshelves. You may also decide that you like having a lot of books, that you want a really full library. And I don't think that's inherently bad either, but it goes back to the first point of designating a space for book storage and sticking to it. I think a dedicated library with full shelves that's otherwise uncluttered can look really good, but budget that space and have a clear idea of what your goals are so you know what kind of real estate you're working with and how many of those personality badge books can actually fit into it. 
I'm gonna tuck this one in here because I think it's related. I know many people identify strongly with books, but you don't need to cart around every book you've ever read with you to show that you're well-read or to have a conversation about books. If you're keeping physical books as a means to sort of keep track of what you've read, then there are other ways to do this that don't involve carting around mountains of books with you for the rest of your life. There's the website Goodreads, which is really good for keeping track of what you've already read, as well as books that you'd like to read in the future, which brings me to my next point. My fourth tip is to designate a space for books you have yet to read or books in progress. This could be their own dedicated shelf or your nightstand. Just don't let them get mixed up with things that you've already read so that they become overlooked. Now for the book people, if you have a ton of books that you have yet to read, if you're the person who can't go into Barnes and Noble without leaving with five books, then Take this as an opportunity to shop your stash and only keep books that you still want to read, that you would buy again if you saw them in a bookstore right now, and get rid of the rest. Having a mountain of books that you have yet to read can really take a lot of the fun out of reading and make that pile of books more of a chore to get through than a source of enjoyment. And once you get rid of all those books, it'll free up a lot of mental space and make it easier to really get into and finish the books you actually want to read. My next tip is to get rid of reference books. Unless you are currently in academia, nobody needs reference books. They become outdated really quickly and you can find all of that information online really easily. And I think this also applies to books that aren't strictly reference books, but we sort of keep them around for that theoretical purpose. So unless you are currently writing your PhD dissertation, get rid of reference books. Nobody needs them. And if you find that you magically one day need that information, there are lots of other ways to find it. The last thing I want to mention are ebooks. So ebooks don't take up a lot of space. You can fit a lot of ebooks onto a single e-reader, and a lot of times digital books are cheaper than physical books. You don't even need a proper e-reader device to take advantage of ebooks. You can download Kindle or any other e-reader onto any mobile device you already have. A friend of mine also mentioned an application to me called Overdrive, which is apparently used by just about every public library here in the United States. You Download the Overdrive app to whatever mobile device you have, log in with your library card, and then you can browse and select from whatever ebooks your library has available. And if you find that your library doesn't have a particular ebook that you're looking for, a lot of libraries are really good at fulfilling ebook requests. You just submit a request to your library, and typically they'll fulfill it really quickly. Now, I understand that sort of book truists or really avid readers might look sort of disdainfully on ebooks. And I won't lie, I kind of understand the appreciation for a physical book, but if you're really an avid reader, then there are some advantages of ebooks over physical books. One is that if you really do read a ton, ebooks can be a lot cheaper than physical books, especially if you read books that are part of a series those costs can really stack up. And so buying digital versions or just renting digital versions of a book through your library can be a lot more cost effective. Again, if you're an avid reader, another advantage is that you can typically acquire eBooks a lot faster than physical books. So if your favorite author is coming out with a new book, you don't have to wait 24 hours, 48 hours, or even longer to get your hands on that book. You can download an eBook immediately. All right, those are all of my techniques for decluttering book collections, and I hope they come in handy if you decide to tackle your own bookshelves. I have one semi-retraction that I wanna make. I had mentioned via an Instagram post that I was considering the idea of doing another 30-day minimalism game in March, but I've decided against that. A lot of the things that I was thinking about getting rid of in another 30-day minimalism game are items or categories that you guys have specifically asked to see videos about. And so instead of doing the 30 day minimalism game, I'll film individual videos for those items and categories. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Are you a happy kitten? Are you hangry? Yeah, she's hangry. <laughs>